Let's talk a little bit about the five types of offenders. By understanding the five levels of, uh, of offender, whether it be criminal or otherwise, you, you can, it gives you a pattern to follow, a plan of action, in trying to make this evaluation of where this person's character might fall on a particular continuum. That's a critical component of understanding this dynamic of discretion, how to uh, justly exercise the executive authority that has been entrusted to you by virtue of your position as a law enforcement officer, correctional officer, detention officer. Um, it could be any kind of a supervisory position, it could be a parent. In fact, when I first saw this particular concept of these five levels of an offender, it was done in the context of, uh, of juvenile offenders. So it kind of has that a little bit of that flair to it. I've adapted it to the police dynamics training because I think it's a powerful indicator of where a person might fall along this continuum to give you some guidance in making these discretionary choices that you need to be making each and every day. So the, <clears throat> so the first type of offender is the simple offender. Now, the simple offender, they're very naive. They, they believe anything. They're very, very easily misled. They're very, very easily influenced. They're oftentimes looking for a leader. Um, they're very ignorant of causes and effects. They don't understand principles of life very well, typically. And um, uh, and, and also, oh, this is the other thing. This is what I was trying to think of. They're corrupted very easily by the scorning offender. That's another category of offender or, or a higher level or lower level, depending on how you look at it, of offender that we'll talk about here in a moment. But the simple, usually the simple offenders, they, they don't really cause a huge amount of problems for law enforcement. I mean, you'll run into them. In fact, you'll probably run into them pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. They just make stupid decisions, that their heart's not necessarily in the wrong place. That they'd really like to do the right thing, perhaps. If they understood the choices and the causes and effects, they might make a good choice. But they're kind of ignorant of all of that. And all they really need is a little bit of education, a little bit of guidance. Um, they, they just kind of sometimes go through life you know with blinders on or sometimes totally blindfolded and they don't understand how their actions influence or affect other people or how they might violate the law from time to time or inside a detention facility perhaps they're, they're the ones that are breaking the rules from time to time because they just didn't know any better and all they need is a little bit of direction a little bit of guidance sir you know uh, this, you're going the wrong way in a one-way street it's very dangerous you're speeding over the speed limit you ran through that red light um, you, you, you did something that was wrong um, and they just need a little bit of guidance to get them back on the right track. And, and they don't really cause a major, major problem for law enforcement. Although you will run into them, and a lot of times they will commit a crime that's serious enough that you've got to make an arrest, you've got to make an enforcement decision, a little bit higher level enforcement decision that you might not otherwise, just again, because of the nature of the offense. And that takes us to the next category of offender, the silly offender. Now the silly offender, um, they're just out for a good time. They, 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 they want to enjoy life. Um, they might have some fun breaking the rules. They think it kind of is kind of like has a fun element to it, uh, an element of intrigue to it, or excitement to it, uh, an adrenaline rush that they might be liking. And so they'll break the law based on that. They'll, oft, they'll also make very, very bad decisions in terms of their relationships and who they want to hang out with. So they're very, again, kind of like the simple offender. They can be influenced by bad relationships in many cases, and you will run into them. The, the, the good thing about a silly offender is they're not, they're not that low of a level of an offender, uh, and consequently they still have guilt for their wrongdoing, and, and you can utilize the guilt that they're experiencing for doing wrong to your advantage in, terming, in, in, uh, in trying to bring about uh, their compliance in the future. So again, you'll run into them in law enforcement. They're not a huge problem. They will break the law. They do have to be dealt with. And, um, and, and from time to time, you'll be, sometimes you can get, sometimes you can take enforcement action this way. Instead of taking the action uh, yourself, you can turn them over to another authority, particularly if it's a child. You can turn them over to the authority of the parents. Or if it's an employee, you can turn them over the, to the authority of their employer. That's a common tactic that I've used in the past when I was in, in, in uh, an enforcement capacity. So, so you've got to think creatively here on how you might want to deal with a silly offender rather than actually taking them into the judicial system. And that takes us to the next category of offender, which we've, we've dubbed the essential offender. Now, the essential offender, his attitude is, hey, if it feels good, do it. He's all about making himself uh, 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 feel good, uh, have a good experience in, in his or her opinion. Um, they're, they're motivated by sensual desires, anger, lust, and greed, 
are, are huge motivators in the life of the central offender. You know, immorality for them is sort of a way of life. They very often will get involved in drugs and other types of bad habits, uh, and drink too much alcohol, things of that nature. A very skilled in deception, we might add. This is a little bit higher level of offender, and typically, if possible, and if it's within your range of options, these are the ones that we want to turn over to a higher authority, turn over to the court system perhaps, uh, and take some level of enforcement action with them if you have discerned that that is the level of offender that you're, that you're dealing with. And this is all about discernment. I started this whole series talking about, you know, putting on your scuba mask so you can see under the surface of the water. Got to go scuba diving yesterday in one of the cenotes here, which is the underground springs and, and cavern system. Really, really incredible. Love doing it. Never had an opportunity. You're scuba certified. Wonderful thing to do. Uh, caught this huge lizard and iguana on the way back. I'll try to post a couple pictures of that. That was fun too. Got nothing to do with the message here. But that's the central offender. Now, the next level of offender uh, is, it causes us probably um, as much concern as any of them. That's the scorning offender. Now, the scorning offender, as I mentioned earlier, they get the simple offender in trouble. They're the ones that can corrupt the simple offender. The principle is that, you know, when the scorner is uh, punished, the simple get, cor get uh, correction. When the simple get instruction, they are, they are, uh, the, the simple offender can make that connection when they see the scoring offender punished for their crime. So typically if we legitimately have a scoring offender, someone that falls in this category, we want to think about some type of aggressive enforcement action if that falls within your range of options. So now we're going to be on a little bit higher end, or I guess if you're looking at it from this direction, higher end of an enforcement action with the scoring offender. Simple offender would be on the lower end of enforcement action, giving, you know, using your discretion, giving them some leniency, and as we move forward, the silly, the sensual, the scorning offender is going to be toward the higher end. To use my traffic uh, stop example, this is the guy you're going to write a ticket to this person, probably for the offense that he or she committed, if you have discerned they fall into this level. And, and you know, this, this is a continuum. It's kind of hard to tell exactly when they cross over from one to the other, but you get an idea of how to apply these principles. Now, here's the thing about the scorning offender. The scorning offender despises rules and he despises authority. Incidentally, he despises you because you represent the rules and authority. So you got a real emotional um, conflict in dealing with this scorning offender that you need to be aware of. And, and they, they, um, they create unrest and contention pretty much wherever they go. They might not always be the one that's in the middle of committing uh, a criminal violation. They, they probably instigated it. They probably got some of the simple and silly and sensual offenders all spun up and got them to do the dirty work, but I stayed in the background and just kind of watched all of the fun unfold. This, we see this in jails and correctional facilities all the time, where maybe there's a riot or there's a food fight or, or, or whatever, and you know the scorning offenders instigated it, but they're not actually involved in it. They got everybody wound, else wound up, and they were the agitators that pushed it forward. That's your scorning offender. And, and they tend to be very proud of their evil exploits. That's something that you can use, and many of you investigators have, um, uh, have become very efficient and proficient at using them, this against them, getting them to brag about their exploits. You know, a lot of our criminal profilers and stuff have learned to do that during your interrogation phase. If you're dealing with a scorning offender, is, you, know, you get them talking and let them kind of express their arrogance and their pride in their illegal activity, and you can get them to confess if you do that, you know, uh, very carefully and, and very thoughtfully. So that's a scorning offender. The last category, the highest level of an offender going from silly to scorning then to steadfast. The steadfast offender is the highest or lowest, most severe level of offender that we have. Now the steadfast offender, somebody that's truly a steadfast offender, they have a seared conscience. Their conscience no longer functions, they no longer have guilt for wrongdoing. In fact, quite the contrary, they tend to think that it's right to do wrong. And the corollary to that is it's wrong to do right. So they, they tend to be very, very manipulative. A lot of your sociopathic type criminals, uh, your serial murderers, your rapists, uh, particularly your sadistic rapists, uh, will fall into this category of a steadfast offender. They're very, very skilled in argument. You can't win a debate with these guys. They, they'll wrap you up around the axle when it comes to arguing the facts with them. And they're oftentimes trying to build coalitions. They're, they're seeking followers for their own self gain. So, the point of this whole message here is that on the low end of the scale, we have the simple offender that just makes a mistake, needs a little bit of direction, they, they get back on the right path very, very quickly, and as long as they haven't committed a major crime, 
then probably we could be very lenient with the simple offender. The silly offender is out for a good time, having fun, very self-centered, does not really have a sense of otherness, doesn't have a sense of how his or her actions...